Well, it's lovely to meet you all. Um, and we're, I'm just going to do the big quick introductions happening in a minute. But I thought I'd just outline what we're going to do this morning and then then what will happen this, this afternoon, just so you know where you are, the shape of things. Um, so I'll just talk a little bit about the plant practice um, that I began with my partner, um, well, decades ago, actually. Um, and, uh, and then going to, I'll talk a bit, a, bit, a bit about the mythology and the medicine of plants that I, we engaged with on the way and how we've developed that and taken it out to work with within on creative ensembles through the Dark Mountain Project. Um, and um, then I'll just talk about the, just in talk about methodology, there is this, the plant practice has three aspects of it, which is going out to meet the plant, um, coming back and speaking about it. It's very, the speaking is really key. Um, and then dreaming with the plant. And then with all those experiences, both inner and outer, um, we create work um, that's responding and in praise and celebration of what we have discovered. So that could be any form of art. Um, obviously, as a writer, I've been doing it in writing all my life. Um, but it doesn't matter what you can do it in dance, you can do it in song, you know, as people have done for thousands of years, responding to the beauty and vibrancy and intelligence of the planet. Um, so um, I'm, I'll, I'll draw it out. We're, we're going to do an exercise too to kind of tune in to kind of the time, particularly this time of solstice, because it's so kind of powerful. Um, you know, it's like the bees. You kind of go out and then you come back. So you're going out into the meadow to have your encounters with plants. Then you'll come back, share what you found. Um, and then this afternoon, you're going to do a dreaming, um, which is meeting the plant in your imagination. And then with those experiences, you forge a creative work. Did you hear the rest of it, Justine, about the kind of work? Hello? Yeah, you, you, you forge a creative work. Yeah, that's it. Group, Good. Whether okay. it's writing or dance or art or something spoken. Yeah. So <laughs> or a picture. It could be anything. It could be anything. Anyway, I mean, there'll be more instructions about that later. But that's the kind of the shape. Um, and then um, I will also be talking about a bit about how you can deepen your practice in these times of ecological catastrophe? <laughs> what, what can we, we, we engage with the intelligence and beauty of the planet and, and how, that, how that can affect um, our, all our relationships, in fact? Um, so there we are. We've got lots of work to do, everyone. <laughs> hope you're ready. Uh, hope you've got your notebooks at hand. But first, I think we're just going to kind of get, get physically into the plant world because our greatest tool of perception is not this or not even these but this <laughs> the body so um i'd love it if you could all just stand up <laughs> you thought you were going to sit down all day you're not <laughs> um so this is just this is about this is kind of tuning in to the to the um to the plant world and um it's taken really from a, a joint practice from someone called, called uh, someone called John Jordan um, or Jay Jordan, as he's now known, uh, who's an active activist, and he's based at Lazad in France in, in the activist community there. Um, and it's called thinking like a forest and acting like a meadow, and it's the acting like a meadow bit that we're going to really just tune into here because at the at solstice, you know. It, it's the moment in midsummer when you're just going out and you, you go out of the woods and into the maximum light time. So um, I'd love you, you. You can close your eyes if, if it's easier. Um, I'm just going to bob about because I'm a bit of a dancer. I like bobbing around, but you don't need to. Um, but what, I, what you would really be great if you could just feel your feet on the ground as if like you were your, your feet were then tapped into the root system of all planets and all trees, I'm called planets, all plants and trees. So the mycorrhizal network there. Take a deep breath and breathe out. And then just really feel your feet as there's, there's a kind of a tingling going on. And then you can imagine below your feet, all these mycorrhizal networks connecting everyone in the room, connecting you with the land that you're on, and then going up into your body as if your as if your whole body is a trunk of a tree, really, really, really strong, full of great memories, full of the sap that's now risen because it's summer and it's gone right to the top of your head. So right, go through your body, through the trunk, take a deep, another deep breath, keep breathing, connect with your heart, connect with your center. 
Midsummer's a time for dancing, <laughs> I think. <laughs> um, and all good dancers know they have to know that all dance happens with the center. And we're, 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 we're tapping into the non-linear planet here. So everything's in flux and movement, but everything's got its got its uh, center. And it's and if you're in the plant world, you're always rooted. So you, it's a kind of paradox you're in there, movement and stability. Then put your arms out as if stretching out your branches to the furthest tip. This is the zenith of the year. So everything's really reaching out here. Take another deep breath. And then I want you to say right up into the zenith of the year with your imagination. Take your arms right up and open as if you were a flower opening to the full solstice sun. Yes. <laughs> and allow those the insects and bees to visit you. So this is an opening. You've been using all your energy in order to open and invite other beings in. So let's have those open arms. Let's get a feeling for that. And then come back into your core. And as if you are inside of you, a whole body, your whole body is like a hive of bees. And you're going to be going out with those bees in your imagination and in physicality, out into the meadow to collect the nectar and pollen and coming back. So if we could make that shape, if you imagine a sort of figure of eight, you're going out to the meadow like the bee. And then you're returning to the heart. And this is the shape that the honeybees make the sister, to their sisters when they go out. They go out and they come back and they do a dance with a figure of eight. Right? So that's the kind of feedback loop that the earth always works on. So we go out and we come back. And inside the, hum inside the hive, it's humming and it's fragrant. And it's sweet. This is what we're going to store for the times ahead as the year goes down. So take a deep breath. Feel all that energy, feel your feet, and then sit down. What I love about the metaphor, well, it's not a metaphor really, is it? <laughs> it's a reality, um, is that you are collecting, you are collecting the sweet experiences of, of your life and you're sharing it with others. So this is an ensemble practice. Um, but uh, for, for me, the plant practice which I've developed actually came out of another practice called the dreaming practice, which I um, started many years ago with, with my partner, Mark. Um, we were on the road for a decade. Um, I sort of gave everything up in the city. Um, I, I used to be a fashion editor for my sins. Um, <laughs> and I went, OK, <laughs> there's got to be something deeper in life than frocks. Um, but I did have a love of beauty always, whether it was a catwalk, whether it was flowers. So um, I went out to discover the earth with my friend, Mark. And um, we started dreaming practice in Australia. And um, we soon discovered that we're looking at our dreams every day, that the way they really worked was to have a speaking practice, i.e. one person would be telling the dream and the other person would be listening and asking questions. And that basic, that speaking practice, we then developed later on in a way of investigating the plant world, which came out of the blue, like all good things. Um, and uh, we started really with the, we were living in Oxford and we started with the plants just outside our front door. And this is something which is, really, really key to remember is that it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter who you are. Anyone can talk with plants. <laughs> it doesn't require degrees. It doesn't require anything. The plant doesn't matter. The plant world doesn't care whether you're rich or poor or whatever. <laughs> it doesn't care. It just wants you to say hello. Um, and so we did say hello to quite a few plants um, over several years. I think we, I think we, tra we trapped about 350 plants in, in, uh, Oxford, not that we did dreamings and met medicine work with all of them, but you know, once you start, it was like the room. I mean, there are just loads and loads of loads of plants. So we investigated them as medicine plants um, in mythology, as they've been known. Um, and they were mostly the common plants, you know, dandelion, some of the plants you're going to be meeting uh, today in the meadow. 
you know, their, their plants that just grow on the wayside, or uh, if you're lucky, in a, in a beautiful meadow in France. Um, but they're not the exotics. Although we did work with with with, with a with a botanical um, uh, botanical garden there in Oxford because we were lucky to have one. And then later on, I realised that you know this practice was was not just for us, right? So we were started to teach. Um, we started to teach the, these methodologies we found, but also started to work with, within the Dark Mountain Project. What we're doing now is tying in, tying in that kind of plant work and dreaming work with the ancestral knowledge of our own, um, our own uh, lands the, the, here in England, but also, um, well, also in Scotland. I work with somebody in Scotland, but also all the people that come to these, uh, that come to these workshops bring all their indigenous knowledge from whichever country they're in. They're tapping into that ancestral uh, way, which for us here in Britain is, is really tied into what I've called the stone clock, which is the eight fires of the year. And I know you had a solstice fire yesterday. So this is tapping into the different times and the growing cycles, um, because one of the key things that plants can teach you, um, or hanging out with plants teach you, is the real use of time or the real understanding and embodiment of time. I mean, we are always in time, as our body tells us, <laughs> oh dear, <laughs> here comes that wrinkle, uh, we're definitely in time. Um, but our mind isn't. And this is the great, for, for me, the great um, struggle is to get out of this whirly, whirly, whirly mind that's always in this kind of, oh, everything's running out, panic, panic, panic. Um, you know, it's all gone horribly wrong, uh, you know, and stuck in this rational mind. How do we get out of that into the bigger, greater intelligence and time timing of the ancestral earth? And plants are a terrific bridge to that time. What might be called, you know, um, I don't know if any of you have read Ian McGilchrist's um, work on the right and left hemisphere, but uh, he he says that the left hemisphere, which is where, where we're all focused on, you know, rational uh, data and facts and all that that kind of attention, which is important, you need it. But when the whole world is like that, we don't see that. And so that, which is where <laughs> all the plants live, which is everything else that is left out of our civilization uh, and mostly the planet. Well, it might use the planet as resources, but the planet as a as a vibrant, intelligent matrix of life. <laughs> this is what we want to contact. And the plants can take us there, a beautiful bridge. Um, each plant with its own uh, territory, each plant with its own mythology, each plant with its own medicine, um, or and, and ways it resonates with us. Because you'll find, as listening to you, everybody resonates to different flowers at different times. But all of them are held in this massive, sense, massive plant time which is not the linear 24 hour clock. <laughs> um, and so one of the best ways really to contact that kind of time, to contact that is to slow down. She says talking very fast <laughs> with her eye on the clock, um, slow down <laughs> and tune in to the plant time because that's the same time as the heart. And it's the heart that can contact the planet, this. Uh -uh. going too fast, right? Going too fast and, you and it's throw it editing all the time. Edit, 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 edit. So how do we open like flowers, like you've just done, you need to open <laughs> and receive the intelligence. So this is a practice. And the practice really, um, it was a practice. We did it a lot um, in order to, well, partly because we were really intrigued. I mean, once you find one plant and it opens, you just want to do it, do it all the time, um, which at that point we, we did have the time. I mean, I wouldn't have it now because I'm too busy, but unfortunately. Um, but so, so the practice was really based on the encounter which is what you're going to be doing soon. You're going out and you're hanging, what our friend Mimi would call hanging out with a plant. <laughs> so this is literally um, an exercise where you sit down beside, alongside with. So that's sitting down alongside as if you were talking to a friend, with a friend and with. It's not opposition, you know, Give me your medicine. <laughs> give me my your give me your nice, nice vibrations. I want to hang out. I, ooh, I want to bring my sorrow to you. Okay, this is not the kind of conversation we want to have with the plant. Um, we want to be with the plant and see what it has to say. 
so you're opening. And sometimes, you know, that can be kind of tricky because, you know, the plant can spark stuff off that actually you might not want to feel. <laughs> and it usually is feelings. Um, and I know you've been working with animals and I don't I don't know what uh, what kind of work you've been doing. But when we were doing the dreaming practice, it was the animals would communicate in our dreams in a very particular way. Like it was always really physical and really feeling, and it was like their presence in places. Um, but the plants are great talkers. <laughs> they just had so much to say, particularly in our dream life. Um, but they were the amazing, these amazing interceptors. So we would have these great scenarios about, I mean, I'm sure you've all had these dreams, you know, when everything's horrible, you can't make it, you can't make it to the train, you can't make it to the airplane, and everything's black and white, and all your all the friends that you wish you'd never see again <laughs> appear, or your family, and you kind of go, oh no, can I ever get out of history? Am I stuck? Is this nightmare? Um, and then suddenly, out of nowhere, you'd see a spot of colour, and it was a flower. And you go, I'm going after that flower. <laughs> going after that flower. Um, and in fact, I don't know whether I... I think I sent some um, some pieces I wrote about about flowers, and one of them was St John's Word. And I don't know if I said in that piece, I can't remember, but we had a terrific dream about St John's Word um, when I literally put it, which is a really good practice actually, um, putting a flower beside your bed before you go to sleep. Mugwort's really terrific for this. Um, you know, if you, if you if you put it beside beside you as you go to sleep sometimes that can really invite the flower into your dream anyway St John's work came into the I was working with St John's work and I found myself I, I went into this uh like underground station where everything was being totally controlled you know and then there was a, and then and then there was a monitor at the top and I sort of appeared and as soon as I appeared which was really the flower, really. I was appearing and uh, suddenly the whole programming went wrong and all the alarm bells went out. And I thought, oh my God, I've got to get out of here. How can I get out? And it was like this world, it was totally full of shopping. It was a shopping mall world. If you can imagine, like no earth, but there was a door. And that door, I went, I'm going out of that door. <laughs> and it was just had a shaft of sunlight and it went out of that door and it was like, whew, into the sun, right? So this is what St. John's work does. does it? it interrupts, it intercepts your programming so that you can go out um, into the real world. Well, actually all plants do that, but St. John's work, and I know you, you might find it today in the meadow, that is a just totally key solar plant in it. And that's why it works with depression and stuff like that. Anyway, I went slightly off the tangent here. See what flowers do? Slightly off tangent, but anyway, it's all, it's all key. Because um, uh, I was going to talk, I was talking about the practice. So. You go out and you hang out with the plant, sitting alongside with, and you open and you wait. And I think, is that right, Justine? You'll have about, well, by the time you get there, you'll probably have about like three quarters of an hour to hang out with the plant. Um, I think it's going to be an hour, actually. An hour, but does that, that includes going there, right? It does, yeah. Yeah. But, but the, whole, the whole business, you'll have a whole hour to be outside, which is great. Um, and as I said, sometimes it's uncomfortable. But don't worry. <laughs> and it will take time for this for this thing to run out. Um, unless you're really lucky. Maybe you'll just get it straight away, which is great. Um, but yeah, if you remember when you sit there, um, you some people like to stand, but actually I think the sitting with is, you know, it's you don't you wouldn't talk to a friend standing up necessarily unless you were at a party or something. So you you might want to sit, you know, sit down. Feel your feet open as in the same way as I was saying before, open, feel your heart, take a deep breath, and then just open to whatever comes, comes. And memories might come. Um, you might notice if you might notice all around you different things are happening. And that's all part of what the plant might be might be showing you. Um, and just just be open to it. That's that's the, the main thing I can say. Um, don't take your cameras out there. I know it's tempting. <laughs> You can go later. And actually, you don't even need to know the plant you're going to sit alongside with. Um, you can, Sharon, I'm sure, knows all, all, her, all the plants um, in the territory. So you could ask her later um, what they are. If that's all right, Sharon, is it? Yeah. 
don't know all of them, but I'll do my best. <laughs> I'm sure you've got a flower guide, if not. I mean, it, it, it go with the plant that speaks to you, not necessarily the plant that you know well. As I say, it doesn't matter you if you don't know what it is, but if you're drawn, if you feel yourself drawn to a plant, that's the one that wants to hang out with you. Um, where there's an affinity. And what you're doing is you're creating a space, a relationship. Um, everyone, we live in such an object-based world, don't we? It's like thing, <laughs> thing over there. Can I use it? You know, and that's not just, you know, physically, that's also can be emotionally and spiritually. Can I get something from? From, from from this being. And actually that's not really the right space. The right space is relational. Everything really on the planet, as I've discovered, is about the relationship. So when you open to a relationship, in that space and time, something can happen. And, uh, you know, whatever the non, I hate this expression, the non-human world, I haven't found a better one. If, if you come up with a better expression, please tell me, the other than human, non-human which has also got the human in it um they all it all communicates very differently um and our 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 challenge as humans really is when we go out and we come back and we have a dreaming which i'll describe in a minute our challenge is to put it in a to, to speak to be able to speak about what we've experienced because what what we do when we go out with the plant is that we're opening to that right hemisphere um, world which is not linear, which is not uh, rational in the same way that we understand um, lang our language to work. And yet words are what we've got. So um, our skill is to, to really relay to our fellow human beings what we've experienced. And you'll be doing that when you come back from the encounter. You'll be in these small groups, groups of four, which conveniently, I think you're 16, so it'll, it's perfect. Um, there'll be groups of four, like small circles, um, and then you'll relate what you've experienced to each other. Now, one of the one of the things we discovered in our travels when we work with other people, excuse me, I'm going to take a bit of water, mm -hmm. is that the best way to, to, to translate our experiences was to take different roles. So, um, when you come back and you sit with your circles, uh, one person, you'll take turns. I think it's, um, well, Justine's in charge of time. <laughs> so it may be four and it may be five minutes, depending on, uh, depending on timing. Um, you'll have four or five minutes each to speak. And the other people will be, one will be keeping the time. I mean, not, not the bell time, because Justine will be doing that, but an awareness of time. One person will be holding the space, making sure that everything's working okay. And one person will be scribing. So in your notebooks, writing down keywords and um, thoughts and things that have been shared um, in your notebook. And then you swap places. So each person gets four or five minutes each on each of these roles. And there's something about the structure of those roles and the timing that allows everyone to speak um, and put their, put their experiences into the sp small space of the circle. And then there'll be a few minutes at the end for you to decide between you who's going to be the uh, speaker in the plenary, which we're going to have. And I will come back and listen uh, with great interest <laughs> to all the things you've experienced. Um, and I've never done it this way before because normally I'm sort of there. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting. Um, yeah, so that's the first part. You go out, you come back, sit in your circles, um, have your conversations, relay what your encounter is. And then uh, you read the plenary and you, you will eat one person from the group will feedback what everyone's been experiencing. So that's the, that, then after that, I will be talking more about the practice and then you'll be very delighted to know you can go and have lunch. <laughs> um, but after lunch, there's more work to do. So after lunch is part two and part three. So part two is to take the, the plant that you encountered um, remember it and go and I, either in either in your rooms or in a quiet place. Um, put aside time, 20 minutes at least. To lie down. And um, not fall asleep. This isn't a siesta. Not quite yet. Um, you may be tempted, mind you, but um, invite that plant to visit you in the, your imagination. This is an ancient, ancient practice, what some people call the practice, which is to meet, 
to a way of going into the, ima the imaginal realms and meeting what whoever you call to you uh, or you invite to be in the space. So this will be the flower. And the flower may come in lots and lots of different ways. It might come in as a color. It might come in a shape. It might come as a powerful memory. It might come with a great big epic. When we started the practice um, with, <laughs> with other people, uh, I remember the first one we worked with, one of the first plants was Fox Club, which I totally love. Um, I don't think, I think they'll probably be over now um, in the woods, but it's a great plant. Um, do meet it next, next year if you can. Um, it's a, a really good plant about time. <laughs> it's, it's a real strict timekeeper. Um, Anyway, I got an epic because I used to use it. I used to get at these epic, epic stories. Um, um, our friend Heather was so stuck in her brain because she's a scientist. And she couldn't, she could I can't get out of it. I can't get out of it. But that was, of course, the medicine. She was trying to get out of it. Fox gloves are heart medicine, right? Um, so she's trying to get out of her brain into her heart. And it's been really hard going. And Mark got one word. He was really annoyed. Oh, I just got one mm. word. Belonging. And... I said, yeah, I think that's pretty key. And actually it turned out to be the most important thing because it was all about coming home, all about not traveling anymore. How do you make yourself at home um, in a country which you'd left a long time ago, which is a, a big practice. <laughs> um, but also Fox Club is a heart regulator. So heart is home, right? And it can't be artificially made. It has to come through the plant. So there are some things that can only come through plants. Um, and Fox Glove and its message of time and belonging and heart is one of them. Um, so into the dreaming you go. And um, this is a really unusual process. Again, you might be uncomfortable. You might think you've got nothing. Um, I've hung out with plants and thought, well, what was that all about? And then like <clears throat> an hour later or two days later, you go, oh, OK. <laughs> Yeah, that's what it means. Um, in fact, uh, we used to hang out a lot with our, an oak. I like Justine. I'm, I'm passionate about oaks, and there's some amazing oaks here in Suffolk. Big gnarly fellows, you know, and each one completely different. And I love, I love to climb in them if I can. Um, always important to climb a tree, no matter how old you are. <laughs> um, and oaks are very accommodating if you can get in them. And this tree used to just give one word. <laughs> consistently and you kind of go what the, what on earth does that mean and then you get it sometimes really much later you know but trees are slower than and flowers as you'll find but with their communications um you kind of go oh okay that's but then it would make pure sense you know and uh, and we are in oak time as well i'm going to be talking about mythology after after your uh, after after lunch i mean not after lunch after you've gone out um a bit but um oak is the big mid midsummer tree and it is it is a door it's that's what it means in um in celtic it's called door which means the door and it is the door of the solstice it's what opens you know and they changes places with the uh with the home oak this point of point of time um but i'll be talking about that a bit later um oak and also uh heather and also clover but that's later We've got two minutes. <laughs> I've got two minutes. Have I, have I put everything? Oh, finally. And I will I will talk about this before before you go for lunch. Um, you're going to make a work. So you this is the third part is to put it in physical form, a creative form, um, which I think you're going to be gathered. You can ask Justine because she's 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 in charge of this afternoon. Um, you're going to go into a space. I think together, and there'll be materials there if you want to do an art, an art, an artwork or a painting. It could be something really small. It doesn't need to win the Nobel Prize. You know, it's just a small sketch, or you might want to draft a prose poem, or you might want to do a bit of a dance, or you, or you, or a song, or a recipe. It really doesn't matter what you do, but create something in this given time, and then you're going to share it. And I think that's going to be the end of the day. <laughs> you probably deserve supper after all that. Um, Yes, so I think that's everything. Justine, I, I see I have one minute left. Is there anything else I need to say before everybody goes out? Um, do, you, yeah, do, you, do you want people to return from the meadow time in silence? Yes, um, yes, you can do that because it's very tempting to, to you know, break into chit chat and be all kind of like, oh, I did this. But actually hold, hold your experience inside in your body, right? 
and bring it back. And then when you're and then form groups, um, which Justine will direct and then and then share in the way that I've said. Does anybody have any questions before we before you go out? Sorry, can I just ask very quickly, with the flowers, does the plant have to be in full flower? Because we have quite a lot of fox clubs that are near the end, but they still have some flower on them. No, if, if you want. I mean, I find the, the fox club talks more when it's kind of all flowers actually talk more when they're <laughs> when they go. But it's totally fine. I mean, I've you know, you talk to I talk to trees in the winter when they're supposedly kind of sleeping. So, yeah, it doesn't matter what it's what the important thing, Sharon, is that, people, that everyone goes to the plant that they're pulled to. That they're drawn to a flash of color or just a feeling like this is it. Is it flowers or trees or both? Well, to be honest, because we're in midsummer, I feel it's such a flowering time. But you know, I'm absolutely passionate about elderflower, and that's <laughs> that's a kind of a tree. Um, so I would choose a flower, and you're going into a meadow, I think. So, but there may be, I don't know, um, the, there may be hedges and trees in there. But again, if you if a tree is coming, say, come over here, I've got something to say, or whatever, I do go with the tree. You know, it's not too prescriptive. Just summarise that that process in very very like, like succinctly. Just so I've got it. Did you catch that? Can you summarise the process just succinctly? Which, which, which one? The encounter, all three. The the uh, the encounter. More, more. The encounter. The, the encounter is you go out, you sit alongside with a plant or a tree or bush that you were drawn to, and you just remain open with it. And you just remain open to whatever it has to say, or you you know just. To, but hold hold a, hold a space there and just you can ask questions in but you know in your mind obviously um but yeah tune into your body and your heart first and put your feet on the ground make sure you open and you open your senses so you're not just in, it, well, you, the trick is to get out of this so you might want to smell the plant you might want to feel it you might want to you know just just get into its orbit and feel yourself You'll be a different being inside, you know, next to any, every plant brings out a different part of yourself in a way. So what, whatever needs to uh, communicate will be there. Is that all right? Yeah. Thanks. And then remember everything because you're going to, you're going to come back and tell your fellows. Okay, so my question is, um, I already have a, a flower in mind and I have no idea what it is. Um, how okay. would I... I well, I just wait till you get out there and see what call, what calls you. Don't go, don't go with preconceptions. Okay. But I just in, in order to identify it to communicate with other people, do I need to know its name? No, you don't. You can just say this was this yellow flower, and I had. And you you know you can find out about it later. Because if you're if you're too busy in botanical identification, it, it will it will block you. Just a very quick, uh, after reading your book, I have a plant in mind that I'd like to be with. So you mean not even to do that, just to go completely, even though I'd like, no. It, it, might, it might call you, but you know, yeah, let's, let's, not, let's not be in control. Okay, Gary? Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing that wonderful dance. And you are with us here. I can assure you with me anyway. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, shame we can't all dance together, eh? <laughs> Hi, Alex here. Hello, Alex. Nice to um, see you. So we've sort of summarised what were kind of common themes in our individual oh, experiences. Which brilliant. I meant to say that. <laughs> Uh, they were all very individual, but there were slight, um, yeah, nuanced uh, things. So um, we ha all had quite playful flowers. Um, so some of us had flowers that were dancing, others singing, giggling. So there was a bit of a playful energy to, to all of us. Um, there was definitely a common theme of picking flowers that felt overlooked and not seen and small and sort of kind of vying for our attention quite a few of us started off with one and then got drawn by another that was close by um and then there was also um a few that 
there was this feeling of um, kind of competing or fighting uh, between the flowers that were around, uh, you know, the one that we were speaking to uh, or speaking between each other, but we were also in relation to that relationship between them. Um, and uh, we were experiencing the experience of, of them together with also us as well and getting that information sort of relayed to us. Um, and then all of us felt um, quite a few emotions. So a mixture of like sadness, anger, joy, taking the mic or like humor. Um, yeah, that was our group. <laughs> Great, thank you. <laughs> That's the thing about working in a meadow. <laughs> There's more than one, yeah. Cool, thank you. Okay, group number, well, I'll say number two, but I don't know if you've got numbers, but the, the next one along um, as we're going around the circle. So I hope I do a good job. We didn't summarize. So in our group, um, um, one person has a lot of knowledge, done it before, and she felt quite empty. And that was actually a real good thing to be listening more deeply and trust emergence or something. And um, she found a plan that was also like communicating something about a portal of life and death. Can't remember now the name. I only know the clove. Yeah, there was uh, foxglove. Oh, what was Fox the flower? Foxglove. Oh, foxglove, okay. Yeah, foxglove. And there were also uh, words coming with it. Uh, that inspired or um, like trust, acceptance, I think, and this portal feeling. And then um, another one in our group, uh, I think that was also similar to myself, being fascinated by the stem and the flexibility and where it's more grounded and firm in the earth. Um, also getting curious about uh, another person sharing like underneath the ground, the water, even if the river was quite far, feel the connection with the river. So, it, it, so I think the theme was that through the plants connecting more, being surprised how you connect to other things around you or that come to mind, like also the oak tree came to someone to mind, but it was quite far away. Hmm. But somehow that was important. Um, yeah, uh, and I think, yeah, like the previous group, like uh, words come up and also imagery. One person had a real image of a, of a, of a human being in a beautiful dress, a lady. So the plants. What, what, what was that flower? Yeah, I don't know. Or do you want to say the name <coughs> of the flower? Oh, it's just a, a purple. A purple flower. Purple. <laughs> I don't know the name. I think it was okay. Master. Yes. Or the um, you know, uh, the, um, bales, the hay bales. Okay. And I have the fluffy one that you can blow. Oh, uh, dandelion. Yes. Oh, cool. I love dandelion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it's a lot of playfulness and light and awe and yeah. That, that's a very naughty flower. <laughs> Is it a naughty flower? Oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I can see it in you as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's great. Excellent. Um, okay, third group. The pink flowers under your hands was that cool? Wait, in front where you saw the yeah. that, that's that's is the that's the pink valerian, red valerian valerian. So we had one member in our group who um, picked a flower that seemed to be in a bed of other flowers which had died and um, yeah he was very good at, at actually uh, creating a conversation with the flower and he entered into that flower and he was very concerned if the flower was lonely without the others around but actually the flower was communicating that he the flower had everything that they needed so they kind of entered into this relational talk and I think um, it's the beginning of a bigger conversation. He felt very interconnected with the flower. He wanted to go with him, the flower. I think he's put a hymn for the flower. Maybe it's a feminine flower, I'm not sure. But the flower answered, walk before you can run. So like, you know, take your time. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, and you felt very welcomed into the flower world, where the other part, nice. um, person in our group, um, um, she really connected with um, the chamomile plant and felt the healing power, the calming um, of some stuff she was processing. And then she went to the rose and, um, yeah, emotions came up and she really felt the heart energy that, she, that helped her embrace what was going on. Um, I kind of did wonder from flower, I started with the poppy, but it wasn't quite right for me. So I went to this pink valerian, which was this wild beauty. So I sat there and I loved the fact that it was wild and growing like on, on concrete, but still had this majestic. So I sat there and then this little hummingbird, is a hummingbird moth or? Oh, wow. Yeah. And it was just, cause I was in pink as well. And the plant was in pink. So I kind of, kind of did. Brilliant. So I really saw like for five minutes it like going and the meticulousness of going into each plant and hovering and and I just feel this plant can teach me a lot of how to be wild and majestic and you know I don't know I'll be going back for more wisdom um yeah so that was our group lovely thank you I love red valerian and it's amazing how they just grow out of rubble and waste grounds <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's great great brilliant Okay, last group. So I don't have a summary, but I'll give you a little snippet from our different people. Yeah, um, just just a minute or something would be great. We have um, one person who got a lot of feeling. They're looking. They found this very tall plant in the in the meadow. Felt a lot of um, sadness, sorrow, and then some hope. Um, we had somebody else who who was saw lots of light appear um, at some point. It was a sort of pulsating, um, expanding light that came um, with a soft okay. pink flower. Um, I was with the clover um, that was very really oh. playful. It had a, a I got a long, really strong kind of color of red light at one point that felt anxious. Um, and then there was sort of a socialness and I was with these two clovers and I somehow at some point had to leave and ended up um, in a big field of clover and it felt like I'd been invited to a festival. It felt very, <laughs> very yeah, very different. It was um, lovely. And then um, another person in our group that ended up with those tall things that can come out of onions or garlic, so those really long ones with the big flowers on the top um and had uh, a nice chat with with them with their little quirky hats and um and oh, they sound like leeks <laughs> okay yeah they had these funny little hats and um, yeah they're great aren't they <laughs> so that's a very short summary of our group that, no that's perfect because that's what we've got really got time for you'll probably have to talk at length later yeah Interesting that so many of you got that it wasn't just one flower, because one of the things that inspires me about, about acting like a meadow is that um, even though we live in a culture that, that is supposedly from Darwin's influence of uh, red and tooth and claw going from the animal kingdom, that actually he was more interested in the end of his life in the plant kingdom and spent a lot of time observing the chalk meadow in uh, Sussex, in which he discovered that the more species in a meadow there are, uh, the more resilient the meadow is. Um, uh, and that's partly because everything's in communication with, with each other. Um, I mean, several of you got the fact that you, you might be with a small plant that is actually connected to the oak by the river. Um, this, is, this is all the mycorrhizal uh, networks we were doing in the beginning of the exercise. And that's, you know, you might have one flower, but it acts like somebody said, it's like a portal. It's a portal to the rest, to everyone else and everything else that's going on. And not just the flower world, it will also connect with um, with the wind, with the insect world, as somebody was lucky enough to get a hummingbird hawk moth, was it? Yeah, oh, gorgeous. I haven't seen one of those in years. Um, so it's this, this is one of the reasons I feel it's really key to connect with plants in a time of absolute uh, ecological crisis because uh, there you get the backing then of the plant world in everything you do and if you work in activism which which I do some um, which I partly do and certainly support activists um, to do with climate and environmental uh, uh, defense um, 
you need the backing of the plant world. In fact, I don't think we're any of us are going anywhere without the backing of the non-human world and with indigenous uh, knowledge and indigenous uh, medicine. We're just not. We do, it's not going to be possible to go to. To, to to go anywhere <laughs> to move to to even withstand what the changes that that are going on. So, although the plant work in many ways started off as an inquiry, um, you know, was by, both by Mark and myself, and then became an art practice. Uh, it's always with you know as I as the years advanced and, it, and these crises became more apparent that this work was not just about. Us being interested in plants, or even um, or even soul work, or anything. It was actually this is essential. This is an essential connection, and we need to make that communication between the earth and ourselves um, in a radical way. So, um, I was going to talk here very well. I've got a couple about ten minutes, and then we've got going to have ten minutes for Q and A. Um, but just to kind of outline the, the, how one can deepen such a practice. So, the, you know, this this kind of is an opening. I know some of you have worked with flowers before, but for those of you that haven't, it's a kind of a catalyst to kind of open the conversation um, that can be ongoing. Um, and it is, as I said, a, a wonderful thing to do. I, I now don't work particularly with individual flowers, but I will. I go consistently, particularly in the flowering time, um, consistently make small pilgrimages. I know it's not quite the right word because I don't really have that relationship with the plants, but I go out deliberately to uh, meet the snowdrops right at the beginning of the year and then follow the arc of the flowering year. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure I hang out with the bluebells, with the sea kale on the shore, with the lime blossoms, you know, working <clears throat> with the flowers in terms of making mead um, and fritters, you know, actually eating them <laughs> and uh, just in, totally immersing myself in the whole fl flowering season. And I do that, but I also do that deliberately because, as I said, I live in um, a monocultural agricultural district. So what walking the flower path, as I call it, is a deliberate act within a living landscape as you walk noticing the flowers. I mean, yes, the fields, yes, the raising, yes, the gamekeepers, yes, the ravaging the hedgerows, that all goes on. And I'm not I'm not blind to it. But keeping the flower path is also myself, my heart. My energy is with the small flowers um, that you've been noticing, the, the so-called weeds. We don't call them weeds. <laughs> Everything's a flower, right? Um, that grow alongside it, you know, or grow in the waste grounds. So I was saying about the, you know, waste grounds are incredible places because the flowers will come up to restore the land. Um, and some of the biggest, you know, like the like St John's work flourishes on the sides of railway tracks, you know. So some they're always doing this work with their presence, with their roots, with them when they're dying down and when they're coming up again. It's uh, this is the whole restoration, getting into that narrative of restoration, of regeneration. Plants show us the way, and part of that showing, part of that showing of the way of the rising and the fall. Um, is absolutely encapsulated in this time of stones calendar I was talking about with the eight fires. And some of the mythology which, which, which supports that, I mean, particularly from these islands, is, um, is what is the, is the trees uh, following some kind of alphabet all the way around the, all the, way around the year. Um, and the high point, uh, what I've been teaching really with the solstices and equinoxes in particular are these five five points. You know, the so you you've got the two you've got two trees at the bottom um, that's that's holding the door of this winter equinox open, and these in the Celtic system um, are the female vowels of the tree alphabet. So you've got the pine, you've, you've got your, the yew, which is the last tree of the year, and the pine, which is the first tree of the year. So those are the two trees of the winter equinox, and winter solstice, sorry. Then you've got the equinoxes. But at the top, you have the final vowel, which is on, which is heather, bell heather which is a flower of the bees, because this is, as you've probably been, you've probably done all this already with the bees, right? But this is a really exciting time for the, for the bees, June, because that's when the queen goes up into the sky <laughs> and the drones follow her. Um, and so it's the great marriage of the, of the bee, of the, of the colony. Um, and that then she then can start another colony somewhere else if she's allowed to. 
<laughs> um, if we're natural beekeepers, we allow that to happen, um, rather than these controlling beekeepers that don't allow it to happen. Um, so it's this apex of the year, and that's the heather. Um, but the, but the plant I'd love to share with you, which has been a new discovery, um, a new discovery this year, is one that's already been mentioned, which is the clover. Didn't somebody say they were going to go out dancing? <laughs> it was like a festival. Yeah, totally. So this lovely white clover um, has a wonderful myth attached to it, um, or connected with it, rather. And it, I discovered it literally just before solstice, because, you know, I spend my life dealing with the underworld. <laughs> it's like, but my birthday is at solstice. So I mean, like, I really want to get out in the sun. I don't want to be scrabbling around in the dark all my life. I mean, I know the territory and I'm happy to teach it, but I want to get up there. <laughs> I want to be in the zenith. Um, anyway, I found this myth and it's just like, well, I say I found it. The myth, you know, it's a bit like the plant. They arrive myths, you know, without without prompting. So Olwyn of the White Track is all. It's a phrase I remembered, and I thought, what is Olwyn and the White Track? Does anybody there know this myth? Anybody? Anybody from Wales? It's a Welsh myth. Um, anyway, Olwyn. Charlotte, you oh. just cut out. Oh, did I? You just cut out very brief. You just cut out very briefly. We heard you found this myth, and then it all went a bit weird. Oh, did you did you hear the name of it? Olwyn of the White Track. That's great, thank you. thank you. Owen of the White Track. Yeah, so Owen of the White Track is, is a very interesting. It's, I won't tell you the whole story because you know, they're always these long stories. <laughs> but basically she's the daughter of Bran, of giant Hawthorne, who has, who, who, um, who and the myth says, if she gets married, um, he will die. But this isn't, you know, you know what myths are like. <laughs> People are always dying and it's always, you know, disastrous but it's mythic so giant hawthorn has his head cut off at, at Beltane because because she does find a suitor after he's done all these 39 tasks and um Olwen then becomes who she really is she comes out of the underworld and she reveals herself as a son now i love this because you know mostly sun the sun the sun uh, beings are blokes I thought, yeah, <laughs> the sun's female. That's cool. That's totally fantastic. So um, she, but what's interesting is that the stories around her revolve around her, and she just like holds the holds the sun as the sun. As everything moves around the sun, right? And, and that's what she's doing. She holds the story. So it's really interesting about solstice. This is all about holding the light and being there in full in full solar, our full solar cells, right? Um, it's about holding that light. Um, and she's called Owen of the White Track because wherever she walks, white clovers follow her. So whoever got clover there was tapping into something, right? Because uh, the white track is just all the clover that follows her, which is beloved, as you know, of the bees. Um, clover is, I mean, I've got I've got a, it's so, a so-called French lawn, which means it's got lots of weeds in it, including clover. And I can't walk anywhere because there's just bees everywhere. Um, so it's actually wonderful, a wonderful plant. And it regen being a pea, it regenerates the soil. So it's all cool. All one of the white track, the actual white track of the clover, if you see it at dusk, which I know you have to wait quite a long time at the moment, you'll see that it glimmers and it, it's a, it mirrors the um, Milky Way. That's basically, so when you walk the white track, you are walking on the earth in line with the sun and mirroring the cosmos above you. How cool is that? <laughs> um, so I do encourage you to go and walk in some of that clover, which you've obviously got lots of there, um, which is absolutely great. Um, I just wanted to mention a couple of other things. I'm, I've got some notes here and I'm going to just quickly uh, check with them. Take your time, Charlotte. No, I just really would. I just feel that that in fact, um, it's really key to connect with these myths because they they underpin our being here on the planet, and they allow change to happen. So, a, a book that I've been writing at the moment is uh, revolves around the myths of psyche of the tasks of psyche. 
Um, and it's all about cultural divestment and change. And actually, I don't think I would be able to make any sense of the kinds of change that are what we, un we need to undergo, whether it's letting go of power, whether it's giving up flying, whether it's any of these things, if it, isn't, if it doesn't have a sense of a mythic underpinning. Um, and one of the key things in the myth of the myths of psyche is that she has to connect with the plant world, with the, with the insect world with the rock world, all these non-human aspects in order to fulfill the task. And, that, and that's one of the aspects of our beings that I said earlier, that we're not really going to go anywhere, I don't feel, um, unless we connect with these myths. And connecting with the flowers. So the, there are two things going on, I think, here. One is to, is to connect with their medicine, by which I mean how we balance ourselves, not just ourselves as physical individuals, but as beings within a, in, within a system, within a collective. So we do it in a network way. As you, It was already happening. You see, this was already happening. It was being shown by the flowers that you were talking about, that everything is connected. So when we make a move with a certain attention, with a certain intent, with, with openness, um, with oh, the, the, really the generosity of the sun and the creativity of the sun, um, because Olwen just keeps losing her rings. <laughs> she doesn't care. She doesn't care because, hey, there's lots more <laughs> where that comes from. So that's the bit where we need to connect with the center, the core central connection. Um, and I know that um, that Justine would like to have a quick, we'll have a 10 minutes Q&A after this, but um, I'd love to just end what I'm talking about here um, with a poem, if that's good. Actually, it's not, it's a song. It's a song um, that comes from the Wichol people in Mexico where I used to live. Um, and it's very short. I'm not going to sing it because I don't know this. I don't know the tune, um, but I love it. But if you'd like to just put your feet on the ground, if you can, wherever you're sitting, and just go into that core, into the flowers that you were with, remembering what that's like in your body, into that heart space, into that center. If you can breathe and take a yeah, take a deep breath. And close your eyes if you'd like to, but you don't have to. And I'm going to read the song. For we are all, we are all, we are all the children of, we are all the sons of and daughters of a brilliantly colored flower, a flaming flower. And there is no one, there is no one who regrets what we are. Thank you very much for listening, and I'd be very happy to answer any questions. Silence. <laughs> Hi. Um, you showed um, you showed Yarrow there. Yeah. Because that was the power that I had. I just wondered whether you, whether you had Yarrow for any reason with you. You, you Sorry. showed up. Did you want me to show you the Yarrow again? I just wondered why you had the Yarrow, because that, that's the flower that I was drawn to. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's, a very, it's a very cool flower. It's really good. Um, in fact, this is the first plant I ever really worked with as a medicine. What is the medicine of Yarrow? Um, well, for, you know, for, for kind of physical medicine, it's all, you know, colds and flu and everything else, but it's a, a really good immune stim stimulant. But I think energetically it's really interesting because it, it's sort of like, yeah, the, the, the sort of energetic immune system, if you like, you know, it's like you go out and you're kind of bombarded by things and Yarrow just likes me. You know, it's got such a good, look, people are talking about stems. That's a seriously good stem. <laughs> um, and it's a warrior, you know, it's Achilles Millaflorum. So this is named after Achilles, the, 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 the warrior in the, of the Trojan War. So, um, yeah, and it smells great. And it's just really resilient. So, yeah, immune system on all levels. <laughs> Hi, Charlotte. Gary here. Hello, Gary. Fortunate to live near the Daisy Trail, the Milky Way. Oh, good. Um, I, 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 
have you written a book on on medicine and and I'm sorry for my ignorance and the med the medicinal properties of uh, plants yeah I mean I'm not a herbalist but I it's uh, it's definitely more of a dreaming book yeah but 52 flowers that shook my world I think Justine's got the link um it's available as a pdf yeah, yeah. And that's, right and that's got the medicinal in it has it yeah it's I, got some, some of it but on, it's on, on Amazon yeah, I did look at that on Amazon. It was about. Oh no, I, it's not on Amazon, no. <laughs> oh, it's not. Oh, oh, I actually, actually, I think it is. Uh, no, I think I think somebody put a Kindle on it. I don't know. I don't. I didn't sell it to Amazon, but <laughs> somebody did. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't I'll matter. Get it. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Take care. Thank you. Again, um, just quickly, you only mentioned um, working with the plants medicinally. Do you do this? Is it the same? process of going out being with the plant coming back is it that same method methodology or is it a different one that you follow for the, the no, it's the same it's the same i mean you know there are loads of there's, there's loads of um really really good herbalism work out there if that's what you want to follow um and i as i say i'm not a herbalist i've worked with a lot of herbalists and um and i use plants a lot or, or have done for as medicine but as physical medicine but um, yeah, but I'm more intrigued in the communications because I think that has to come first because we're so resourced and consumer based that, you know, going out to get what it's about. And it's a common thing. People go, oh, I want to know the medicine. It's like I want to take but it's like, can we say hello first? <laughs> can we say, uh, can I get to know you? Um, maybe I can bring something to the plants. You know, it's that whole feedback loop that is really lost in our culture because it's so linear and so consumerism. So for me to get back in back into that uh, feedback loop is really important. So yes, of course, if that is a great way for plants to show. I mean, plants are doing medicine all in the sense of balancing us, not taking plants to get better for illness, which is a different thing, but yeah, but keeping us in balance, um, in harmony, in time, uh, in connection, plants do that brilliantly. Thank you. My pleasure. So Justine, did you want me to just recap what's going to happen, or is it got another question? Oh, somebody else has got a question. <laughs> Come on, ask it. A quick one. Okay. Um, do, you, do you look at um, fungi as well and mushrooms and how they relate to the plant world, or is that a whole different area? It's a whole different kingdom, but I love them too. Oh, no. But you know that is a different story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, when autumn comes, that the, the, you know that's. So they was it very different ways of communicating? Do no, I've had them? I've had some pretty knock on uh, communications with 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 uh, fungi. I just don't know them as well. Um, um, you know, apart from sort of the big big obvious ones, and of course, I love to gather them <laughs> and eat them. They're delicious, and they so don't mind because you're only eating the fruit, right? <laughs> So, uh, Justine, did you want me to just talk about the next two things, the dreaming and the creative? Yeah? Yeah, if you could just recap on Okay, so, yeah. so after lunch, no problem. So after lunch, you're going to go into a quiet space and lie down. I say lie down because I find it easier lying down, but you don't have to. Um, you, you can also sit if you wish. Um, but it's really to close your eyes and really relax your being. I'm sure you've done lots of this already. So really relax your being and just open your imagination to a communication with the plant that you hung out with earlier. So invite them in. They might come as a character. Somebody said there was a character in human form. Sometimes they do that. And whatever message um or shape they make or medicine they give you or communication they have feelings and everything, you'll just connect with them on a on a really deep inner level uh, and that kind of that fosters a very deep much deeper well not much deeper but a different relationship or deeper connection with the plant so that's one thing um and about 20 minutes minimum i would say for again because it might take some time to get used to it and the head might whirl around um, and then afterwards, I think uh, Justine's got a particular time when you're going to gather and you make a creative piece. So this is part of the, the feedback loop, the creative work you're going to make, which, as I said, 
it, it doesn't have to be finished. You haven't got time to do a great big finished piece. Um, but do a drawing, doing painting, doing a, a sketch for, maybe you want to do a sketch for a ceremony. Um, maybe you want to design um, a dress made of flowers. Um, uh, you know, you might want to write something, write a poem, write, write a memory. Um, but whatever it is, do it with your hands if you can, because there's something about the haptic intelligence, the kinetic intelligence of our bodies that enables us to really, really connect with um, with the beings. And this is, you know, this is what people have done for thousands of years, celebrate the plant world in pottery, in their clothes. You know, you only have to look indigenous clothing to see what a celebration it is of the plant world and different dyes and everything. So. That's the third task. And then I think you're going to, and then you're going to meet in a circle later on and share, maybe just a couple of minutes, share what, what, what you've created. Um, and this grounds it in physical reality, which is really important part of the, of the process. Because we can just talk, 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 and then it, woof, it goes away. Right? <laughs> next, right, next, you know, next day you're onto something else. But it, to, to embody it in a physical form, in a creative form, is a really great way of, uh, memory of, of holding it in the memory and also holding it in the collective imagination because it's grounded 